we'll have an interactive session whereby we'll 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 do a poll. So if you kindly uh, could uh, log in to uh, menti.com, menti that is m e n t i mentimeter. So we would like you to to answer this question. So what is the biggest barrier that young women traders face when they try to expand their business? So this will be will guide our discussions with the youth um, before we start, and we want to to also get your opinion on this. So let's have the results. Uh, Yes, so um, the options were lack uh, of access to affordable loans, um, high competition, limited access to markets, uh, inadequate business and financial training, high operating costs, and lack of reliable uh, uh, transport options. So most of you think that inadequate uh, business and financial training um, is uh, the biggest challenge, followed by lack of access to affordable loans. Yeah, so we can move to the to the next one. So there's another question, an interactive one. So don't log out yet. So what is the biggest challenge that uh, young women face uh, when they are accessing uh, formal financial services? There's a lack of collateral, high interest rates, and limited financial literacy, strict lending criteria, and also lengthy complex and complex application processes. So again, uh, you can key in your results, uh, we see. So um, the results, yeah, just refresh. Yeah, so again, um, lack of collateral and also strict lending criteria and lengthy and complex ap loan application processes. So most of you think uh, those are the biggest barriers there in terms of access to formal finance, financial uh, services. Um, interesting that uh, you most don't think that high interest rates are, are a barrier. But anyway, so that leads, leads us to now the panel discussion. So uh, with me, I'm joined uh, with Kennedy. Kennedy, how are you doing? Yeah, so maybe Kennedy, uh, just give us a brief journey uh, about your, your business, your entrepreneurship, and what it is that you do. Thank you. My name is Kennedy Kiprop, Director Canon Multi-Service Limited, Director Goldstone Investment Limited, and also Director Nayara Dairies Enterprises, which was my primary investment just coming from school. And in a brief history of how I started after graduating, that was back in 2018, I came home and the one thing I saw that I could um, turn around and make it my first investment was uh, milk because my farmers are, can I call them traditional farmers? <laughs> it's, uh, it's more like habitual, for, especially for us Kalenjin. So there are cows here and I've seen them struggle to sell milk. Uh, at one point when I was going to campus, I almost missed to go to school because whoever was being supplied with milk uh, had not paid. And so to me, I saw that as an opportunity and I started uh, taking the milk from my parents and selling and paying them uh, the retail, uh, whatever they, they used to sell to other suppliers. And that way I was able to build my business and before it was so long, I had several outlets buying milk from farmers and selling them. Eventually, uh, bought a cooling machine and a pasteurizer and that's way I grew into the journey. So 
I also I am an agripreneur as it's lit, yeah, as it's lit, written there. I do horticulture and also I'm a farm I'm a, I'm a maize farmer. So yeah, that is one of the many things I do as a young person. Thank you, Kennedy. So um, we've seen the different challenges um, that people have pulled um, that uh, women face when they they need to access finance. So on in your case, so what are the challenges uh, you've experienced uh, in terms of access of finance? Oh, thank you. Um, one of the major ones is, of course, lack of collaterals. Because uh, going to any financial institution, the most basic uh, requirement will you to attach a security to the loan facility that you are about you you, you want to get from them, uh, and also one of the um, one of the other challenges is uh, limited uh, lending history. Like just coming from school is your first time trying to engage in business. You have no uh, history of borrowing, and I. And most of the banks rely so much on that in terms of qualifying you and giving you a loan. Also, uh, one of the other challenges is we don't have, not most of the banks have facilities that are tailored to young people. In the sense that uh, these are young people with limited uh, credit history, with nothing or very little to attach a security. But of course, they're still expected to have a collateral attached to it. So I think one of the major challenges is lack of facilities tailored specifically for the young people. Great. Um, thank you, Kennedy. Maybe you can pass the mic to Dorcas. So, Dorcas, how are you doing? Very fine. Osalama. Great. So, give us a brief uh, description about uh, what you do. Uh, before we we start comparing, if you have the you've had the same challenges uh, as Kennedy here. So as you've heard, my name is Dorcas Kisui. I'm a young entrepreneur. So mine, um, I've engaged in curios and bead making. So mine is more of creativity, and I've grown to it since my parents and everyone around me is usually doing that business. So. So, so um, have you been able to access digital financial services in the course of your day-to-day -day business? Yes, I have, but mostly um, M-Pesa. Since um, banks, I have not yet I can accessed an account yet, with, but I wanted to access what doing equity. Yeah, that one is very reliable and maybe cooperative, mm -hmm. but the interest rates, they're mm -hmm. really high. Especially when you want to transact money from your account to okay. your Mpesa. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. It's really a bit cumbersome for me since um, I'm, si I'm still new. Okay. I'm a young in the business. Actually, how, how, how long have you been mm -hmm. uh, in the business? Uh, for around four years now. Okay. Yeah, I'm 23 years old. Okay. Yeah. So I'm also here to get inspired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thanks Dorcas. So, uh, Shekina. How are you? Hi, guys. Are you good? Ah, lovely, lovely. Okay. Yeah. So tell us about your business. Uh, first, I'm Shekina Nyambura, uh, founder of uh, Mbura Interiors. Uh, from the name, uh, Mbura means rain. And uh, what the, the whole picture of Mbura Interiors is bringing authenticity to your homes using African fabric or rather African print. And now we are taking it a step further and bringing African print to your corporate spaces. So we're doing corporate gifts, corporate souvenirs. We're done, I mean, giving calendars and umbrellas is so 2008, you know? Let's give something with an African touch to it. So that's what we're doing as Mbura Interiors. Um, one of the challenges for me is actually high interest rates, and it's interesting that you guys didn't actually like book that on your polls, because for us, we are so small, our muscle is so small, so we put so little margins in our pricing, such that by the time I'm paying 50%, guys, I mean, 
our margins are so small because you know we're young, we're really young, and the time you're getting enough muscle to now put a, a higher price or even just build your market and numbers. I mean, we can't we can't compete with those bank rates. That's why uh, we know food liver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, wait. Just before yeah. you, before you give out the mic. Yeah. So I was wondering, um, how long have you been in business, and did you face any challenges now when joining that industry, that specific industry, and which what challenges were those? Yeah. So interestingly, Mbura in two years is just four months. So I think I'm the youngest entrepreneur here. I started with doing beddings. I used to import beddings from Turkey. And first you learn that uh, different industries have their own tokatels. Now me, I learned that using, starting with the beddings. And I was like, okay, why am I stressing importing fabric from Turkey? And we have our own heritage here. So now that's what moved me to go to African collections. And then now pushed it now further to corporate. So it's been, I've been able to learn so much. And one of the things maybe to encourage you guys to keep telling your stories. Yeah. As we, don't, we don't know these things. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure you'll get you'll get inspired once you're done with this conference. So, Victoria, how are you? Hey, I'm well. So, tell us about yourself and and your business journey. Okay. Yep. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Victoria Dilani. Uh, I have a company called Dilan Kiki Company. Uh, I say that I'm a walking mall because I do a lot of things. Uh, currently, I'm in branding and handcrafting, so I do branding, uh, different things, and customize items. Uh, when you go outside, you'll find a stand there. I have uh, baskets. I call them Ankara Kiondos, African Kiondos. That is current the current thing that we are doing in Dylan Kiki Company. Yeah, I started my company back uh, in 2019. Uh, that's when I finished school. And then Corona happened. So no one is employing, no one, no company is taking people. So we are at home, we have nothing to do. So that is when I started my company, doing different things. I started with household items. Uh, I did chamas for a mama where I would... Um, get them together, like form groups for them. And then we contribute some amount. And then we bring in, now it's like pulling risk together. And then the amount that you contribute now, at the end of the week, I get you items worth that amount. So then I keep on moving to different things. When now this one is getting saturated or now I know that it's stable, I move to the next thing, next thing. So currently I'm in branding and handcrafting gifts. Yeah, that is what I'm doing. Okay, thank you, Victoria. And it's interesting how you manage to get your initial capital uh, to start the business. So um, I'd like to ask, so in the room we have uh, banks, we have financial service providers, we have different partners, development partners. So what kind of support uh, and this is goes uh, to all of you. What kind of support would you need to to expand your businesses and and also go to the next level if you were to get support? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, the support that okay. The main challenge that we get as as operating our own businesses it's uh, management of, of our finances. You you're the CEO, you're the marketer, you're the account. Yeah. So I'm getting this huge amount of money today. Yesterday I got nothing. Today I get something. And then I really struggled to get that sale. Yeah. So I feel relaxed. Mm -hmm. And so, then I think um, yeah. I, I wanted to get something else. Okay. At the end of the day, I'll go get that squander that money mm -hmm. and then come back to zero. I say, at the end of the day, I'm the one who makes this money. <laughs> so I think we lack a good... Training. It's training. Training, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So any other support that maybe you like to... 
Um, what I would uh, maybe ask the financial uh, service providers here to, to do is to try and come up with a, a tailor-made facility for the young people, and especially those who are in startups. I know some banks do have that, but it is very important. Like she's complaining about uh, high interest rates, something that all of us face, um, and how banks uh, misbehave sometimes. You took a loan when the interest rate was 16, then you, it's high to 18, and you, you just have to struggle with that. So if we can have tailored uh, facilities that are designed for the young people struggling in business, you don't mind, just nurture them. When they get to a point where you want to nyonga them with the 18 and, and plus uh, interest rates, you can, you can do that. But when they have gained muscles, like she said, uh, something else very important is um, she mentioned something of uh, about um, not having the financial the, the knowledge. Uh, like when young people, I don't know what banks can do, but we should have workshops for these young people that come to open accounts with you people, because they're just coming, maybe starting in business, and their business is starting to bring in something, and then they rush to you people, open an account. They even don't know the basic uh, money management skills. So if we can be having trainings and workshops tailored for this uh, category of investors, then we can really help the young people to grow. Great. Um, excuse me. Yes, please. Uh, given that most of us now we are doing online, so keeping up with the trend right now, it's having the knowledge of how you market your items online. Uh, apps as we we having so many apps and others are limited and that knowledge not everyone has that knowledge also if we get such kind of support it would be great for us and uh, maybe we could make the terms flexible for collateral maybe at least something that we can endure or get to yeah something our muscles can really get onto Okay, so um, any questions for our, our panelists, FSPs? Oh. Thank you. Um, my name is Amrik from FSD Kenya, and I have two questions for this group. So thinking about informal services like chamas, you know, uh, friends and family and so forth, you know, how would you compare those in terms of their usefulness to formal sector finance? Um, and what lessons can we learn from the informal sector when we're developing formal products, number one? And number two, what would be your ideal loan product? If you were to be offered a loan, you know, you're talking about high interest rates, flexible terms and so forth, building muscle. You know, if you were to design that ideal product from the point of view of my friend here at Equity, <laughs> um, what would it look like? Um, thank you. Um, informal uh, loans, you see, it goes back to what I alluded to. This one we tailor it to our convenience because um, the terms are set by the Chama members and they set terms that are friendly to their members. So if the banks can also, uh, like we said, have uh, a facility that is flexible to the needs of the young people. That would work excellently. So uh, what, to me, uh, uh, edges these formal facilities is, we, yes, we have limited in terms of what we can offer to our members. I'm also a member of quite a number of chamas, and I'm even more comfortable saving with a chama than saving with, with a bank. Uh, because uh, we've sort of designed our charma in such a way that we also allow our members to invest in that I can borrow from them at a fairly low interest rate. So if we can have um, facilities that are flexible and services that are flexible to the young people and convenient for them, then that one can be something we'll desire to, to do. Oh, also about the chamas, uh, it's so convenient for us because, like you said, uh, we give facilities 
and when you want your facility like today you wake up you're a business person you've gotten this uh, job you're supposed to deliver but you have no capital to do it you run to the chama and in 30 or one hour time you're going to get your money for the financing about the institutions it's a process yeah so the you process is long mm. yeah paperwork collateral give us this time to this time and now your order is running it's like asap you're supposed to deliver so yeah that's another comparison okay okay good morning everyone my name is nixon onyango i am from sokohela we are a digital credit provider so i will want to pose a question to my young brother and sisters um what's the challenge that you people are having to keep good records you see the first challenge was um uh, you are not having adequate training right yeah so where are you getting a challenge to keep records because my colleagues from banks here will say the burden of proof is on you people huh? when you are coming to us asking for a loan the burden of proof is on you eh? you can share we nowadays share good and bad record eh? so you can still argue out for a good interest rate based on your good credit history eh? somebody else will be given 20% another one 15 based on how risky you are but now how do you prove that you are this good person it starts with your records right so where are you getting a challenge to keep good records before you can be trained you know there is a need i need training on this parameter but where do we start from <laughs> uh, oh, oh okay um uh, i don't know of uh, i know there is a minimum ceiling as to what interest the banks charge and i haven't interacted with a scenario where i can go and negotiate for interest rates with my bank maybe i should take in interest of which of which institution you work with because it is a standard and is almost standard in every other bank uh, and actually the most uh, Uh, we had bit is uh, these other money lenders like the digital money apps these days there are so many actually their interest rates are worse because what is the turnaround time it's a month facility that is attached to some very weird interest uh, you asked a question on how uh, where we get it wrong in terms of keeping our records um I wouldn't say I have that problem as a person but I believe a lot more young people are struggling with that. And if you listen to when I was responding to the question that I was asked I said we should be giving trainings to these people even in terms of how to keep proper records proper cell records. These days we take advantage of the online paying uh, platforms where we can have pay bills and stuff like that. meaning it's so easy for you to go to a facility and justify maybe this is the amount that comes into my account or rather every transaction revolves around this account and that one can be used to maybe calculate your turnovers and uh, guarantee your facility but before we get there because that is a journey maybe i am there right now because i've been in business for quite some time but what about a young person who's just in business and has zero history of credit what do we do to that young person give him the basic knowledge every cash you do make sure you transact it through a bank so that there is record of money in and money out and which you can use to justify your case when you go for a facility so it is a gap that we need to address a gap in the sense that we need to give knowledge and education to these young people it is just not enough that a person comes to you and wants an account open and then you go ahead and open an account for them it's even courtesy to just maybe find out from them or even have a brochure on basic lessons about money and banking thank you okay so um yes you can uh, i think i have something to say mm-hmm. that challenge okay first youth entrepreneurs start business 
based on necessity of most of them lack of jobs. So they are starting this business based on I need money. Yet their muscle is very small again, I repeat on muscle. So they are making so little profit. So instead of that profit working, okay, I've been in the banking industry, instead you, you should at least account for your salary in that profit. But truth is, that's not what most entrepreneurs do. We get profit, we go pay school fees. We get a loan from bank, we go, we buy, we buy shopping. It's not that we don't know. She <laughs> died of water. <laughs> no, it's true. Let's 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 just be frank. Because you see, let's say you're getting your ten thousand profit at the end of the month. It is very hard for someone with a family to start going running to buy stock. Na kuna itaji kwa nyumba. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like if I talk to her and I ask her, when you don't know how to do it, she knows. She, she's gone to school. Some of us have our masters, but we know, yeah. I, I know, I like, funny enough, I was in the banking industry for six years and then took a break to do my masters and then now doing entrepreneurship. I understand both sides. I understand your side. It's like, sasa wanalia awajui kupanga pesa. And then now, on this other side, I understand that that profit is so little that to, in, to apply that knowledge we know is so hard. Ama, ama nam nagan. For real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, in the interest of time, I'll take two more last questions. Uh, I'll take them together. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you. Great conversation. My question is to Shekin, I think, because she brought up the issue of <clears throat> share your stories. So I, I, I'm a firm believer that finance is not, as, uh, it's not an end in itself. You have to look at the whole picture. So do the young people feel they have that platform, a platform to bounce your idea with somebody, a platform to get someone look at your model and give you guidance? I think one of the, I think it was Shekin, who, it would be interesting to hear more. Okay, so um, let, let's just take the questions and then uh, we'll answer them all together. Uh, good morning. My name is Rose Gishuki, uh, Head of Women Banking at Family Bank and a mother to your, your age mates. Actually, he's just graduated in engineering and is a CEO of a company called Layup at that tender age. So uh, I want to congratulate you. Namwache kutusalimia CC Banks because... What I'm trying to say is that you guys have got it going. Actually, there's no generation that has had it better in as far as smart opportunities. Yani, you're, you're, you're graduating not to be employed. You're graduating to do business. In our times, we are graduating to be employed. So there are people at Form 4. Certificate was everything, then it came to Form 6, then it came to graduate, then now we are at the master's level for you to be employed. And that is life, okay. So I think one of the things is who taught you? What's your background? Again, look at the guy of milk and how he's doing. Simply because background yake ni maziwa, he does what he knows best, okay. Now, you're also in a very good space because for, I don't know, the first time in history when we were growing up, Banks were up there. There were no digital. The you are the one who used to come to the bank. Now the bank is coming to you. So muache kutula umu muji pange and call us. We are available. If you have a group of young guys in those chamas, call us. Do you know we have chama accounts? We do have chama accounts, and we do lend up to two fifty million to chamas. So register your chamas. Come, let's talk. I wanted to tell you that we are ready to die empty. We've been there, done that, so we are ready to share knowledge. Me personally, call. I will be there. Be fearless. And uh, that thing of uh, the digital financing is easier. No, it's not. You guys have to learn to follow your shilling. Yeah? That one shilling you with arrow because shilling you with kwa TikTok. To answer hapo. Sindio? Ya hapo uya nasema ako broke. That thing of following your shilling, financial information, financial fitness has to start with you. Because she's saying you make 10,000. Excuse me, audience. Did she say she makes profit? The word was profit. 
when you're profitable you're already on a trajectory it means umefanya expenses kila kitu na uko na to do si ndio so you need training on things like profit first you need training on like so i have this shilling how am i going to use it please note that when you put one shilling in the bank and by the way you can bring one shilling to the bank it will be accepted with the same stamp that accepts 1 million so to answer hapo si ndio create your cash flows okay so one shilling is called today one shilling tomorrow the next day the next day. it will never be called one shilling again so it has to also start with you guys then you have to be hungry enough to seek knowledge yeah because i find like that is what uh is is lacking uh, we we have unsecured facilities and they are all based on cash flow so one musiogope you guys are the fearless generation we tumewaona mume wetu salimia sana sana so continue being fearless but also work smart okay find people who you think can take you to the next level mine was a comment not a question but i understand the challenges but we are sitting with the lady here gloria and we are just looking at it and thinking lack of information yeah lack of networks uh, lack of support where let's say for example you said you make um, 10000 a day and you bank you go and buy stock and bank 2000 bob send you 2000 times 30 days is 60000 okay 10000 times 30 days is 300 300000 so when you bank that 2000 the bank is seeing 2000 as your cash flow that you ndio ile pesa huyu chalia ama adem ako nayo kwa mkono si ndio but when you put it in na usimame tu hapo utoe tena tushaona si ndio every day bank toa so it is just information so that you create a cash flow we start understanding that you actually trading si ndio and then other personal things which we can address is a story we can go into those stories eh? because even you guys have some personal things that affect your business that are not necessarily linked to to the space we're talking about the non financial issues relationships who has brought you up kwa nyumba zenu mnaka wapi mnaka wapi mmetoka wapi so those are also issues that you need to to look at but just know hapa haijaandikwa hii nguo yangu imeshonewa Jericho market ni mutumba haijaandikwa hapa ati your poor ni wewe una declare na mdomo yako si ndio above all god is with you amen um hi i'm salome from sigap i think what i wanted to suggest has already been mentioned by her in terms of um collateral and how you can create a credit history especially because some of you did say that you're in chamas i know that there are some fsps that are looking now to how they can digitize chamas and vslas and how you can be able to create a digital credit history with your chamas and vslas so that's maybe something you can look into how can you be able to create this um credit history and digital credit history from your chamas so you can use that maybe to go to banks and to other formal financial institutions to get access to larger sums of um of loans so maybe that's something you can look into to help you to build your credit history over time so i think that was just my suggestion yes um so uh, i'm happy you've had the advice but we'll get time to interact uh, with the panelists so um, in the interest of time um i'd request that uh, we end this session because there are other sessions but uh, we'll get to interact with uh, the panelists and we can have discussions uh, during the the break so please let me um just uh, end this this session because we are running uh, a bit late yeah